there, welcome back. So how are you today? When you ask that question, the typical answer is, I'm fine, thanks. Fine, fine, I'm fine. But if I texted that question to you, you might respond with a more specific answer of how you are. Maybe because you can use an emoji like this one, or this one. Emojis have become such an integral part of our communication that the Oxford Dictionary named this emoji, also known as the face with tears of joy, the 2015 word of the year. Which is weird, right? Because it isn't even a word. That is weird. Not to be confused with emoticons, which are typographical representations of facial expressions. But emojis and emoticons may be more than just fun ways to express ourselves. They may actually enable us to identify our emotions with more precision, and that has opened up new avenues of research into human emotions. Okay, I'm listening. The emotions were really classified as into the big six in the 70s by Dr. Paul Ekman. And he identified happiness, sadness, anger, surprise, fear, and disgust. We've largely accepted for a very long time that those six emotions were really the essence of the human experience. But recent research suggests that the range of human emotions is much broader than that. In fact, scientists maintain that there are actually 27 emotional states. Surprisingly, three of the big six, anger, happiness, and surprise, didn't make the list of feels. Because researchers maintain that these 27 emotional responses are all more of a composite rather than a singular feeling, and it's just not as simple as those six. Researchers identified the list by showing subjects more than 2,000 very short videos, about five to 10 seconds long, and the clips included a variety of scenes, such as triumphant soccer goal, or survival of the fittest in the animal kingdom, or Barney the dinosaur punching T-Rex in the face, whatever. And after each viewing, the participants provided a combination of freeform responses and ratings in 34 different emotional categories. Then the research team plotted these emotional clusters of this, these combinations of feelings on what they call an interactive mood map. And what they found was that our emotional states are just not as simple as experiencing a single feeling. And there are gradients of any number of emotions typically felt at once. The mood math is really fascinating. What's even more fascinating is the payoff we get when we better understand our emotions and the reasons for them. This I got here. For example, when we experience negative emotions such as anxiety, fear, or disgust, not only does our body language and expression change, but the neurotransmitters that are released in the brain activate numerous parts of the body. The nervous system springs into action, your stomach tightens, your heart rate speeds up. It's really the body's way of saying pay attention. But here's the really important part. Researchers are now finding that negative emotions can play a more significant role in personal growth and emotional intelligence than positive ones if we are able to identify them and the root cause of the emotion. In short, understanding what you're feeling and why will enhance your emotional intelligence. How cool is that? What are we waiting for? Oh. All right.